I'm a pit bull, and I approve this message. Conversations with a pit bull. My name is Brett Hunt, two-time LA Comedy Award winner, and we're about ready to hit Bollywood Boulevard. Hey. Oh my God. Oh wait a minute. Do not try to adjust your set. Yes, that's true. You, yes, you have Negroes inside your electronic device, but it's okay. Scary. <laughs> this is Conversations with a pit bull. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Hello, Danny. Good What's to up, see brother? you again. You we don't see each other all week. <laughs> so, um, hey, guys. So, thanks for tuning in. We got a great show today. Uh, everybody says that. I don't know why they say that because some of them are great, but ours are always great anyway. All right. So, uh, I'm going to start off with um, Snood in Berlin, okay? Again, conversations with a pit bull. We all pit bulls. We love pit bulls. You know, we're all about all dogs, but we got a bear, that needs help in Germany. I saw that, all right. Yeah. And so that's big. All right. So we want everybody, uh, what is it? Freedom for Snood. This is my boy. All right. I'm going to stay on this until this bear gets some help because he's getting squeezed down. And I know what it's like being 5'7 and buffed guy, uh, <sighs> being in tight spaces, you know. So you know I what that's like, huh? Yeah, yeah, I know what that's like, <laughs> you know. So I can't even imagine what it's like for a bear, man. And, and they constantly. You know, taking away the space that he's got, and it's not a zoo, and I don't know why they don't spray. But anyway, go to Freedom for Snooden, and that's S C H N U T E. All right, and these are my German folks, man. I mean, you know, we got fans all over the world, but you know, they made me aware of that, and so we're gonna be on a mission on this show until that happens. Okay, so uh, you I, let me. You want to tell about the guest, or you want me to tell them about who we sure, got? Sure, I can tell them about the guest. Uh, go for it, man. You know, we always love to have in-studio guests and whatnot. Um, you know, we always try to involve the multimedia with the Skype and our buddies that are all around the world. But every once in a while, we get some of our local people that are on the front lines doing great work for the animals out there. And today we have my good friend, Nicole Stoic Lapidus. She's Hi. representing Dogs Without hey. Dogs Without Borders. And our good friend, Kyle, he's from Smash Face, Pitbull Rescue. House. Um, how you guys doing? Great. We're great. In the house. So we got some great studio guests. As always, we're gonna have Fred Cray uh, to tell us what's going on in the uh, legal world from Pit got, Bulletin and Legal right. News, and, and then uh, our 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 uh, partner uh, Paula Archer, who is our dog adoption specialist, who will come in later on and uh, get some of these dogs rescued. So. Um, and our Skype guest, Richard Rich, Richard Jennings, I believe it is. And you know, again, 62, no memory whatsoever. <laughs> so don't get mad at me, all right? Because I I, I I'm lucky I remember how to get here today. All right, so uh, Richard is from Unchained. Okay. Uh, that's his. And we got Cindy uh, Marabito. You know Cindy, we love. Cindy is like one of the hardest working women in show business or the dog business. And we're going to talk about Doglandia today. Okay. All right. So and and all of this. So if if we start to run short, then I'll just shut up and just we I'll you know, just make it happen. All right. Well, we so, got we do have uh, Fred on the line. We'll go to him in a second. But I f think before we go to Fred, okay, let's get our studio guest just to tell everybody out there in the world real quick what they're about to what they're about, what their organization does, what they do individually, and then uh, we'll kick it off in the Fred and see what's going on in the world of legal news. And that sounds cool. But right before we do that, remember, guys. 
Breeder X. That's the word of the day. All right, coming soon. Check us out. Go to the Facebook page. That's the main thing because we're going to launch. It's going to be worldwide. We're going to do a worldwide launch. Everybody's clicking for animal abuse. So, uh, Ky away, Kyle. Yes, sir. Tell us a little bit about what you do, buddy. Oh, man. Okay. In September, it'll be 26 years as an advocate for pit bulls and other bully breeds, tenacious breeds. Um, I've carved out a niche for myself working with the world's most dangerous animals. Um, aggression is my specialty. Uh, I have an anger management course I teach for pit bulls. Um, people ship me dogs not only from all over California. I've had dogs come in from out of the country. Um, I turn them around, I rehab them, and I put them back out in society, and I do it safely. Uh, I do it. I have a zero bite record. Um, they're not truly aggressive. They're misunderstood. Um, they just need to have the right owner, the right guidance, leadership. And uh, you spay and neuter them early, you're not going to have a problem. Man, that's wonderful. And we've got our buddy Nicole Stoke Lapidus from Dogs Without Borders. How you doing, Nick? I'm awesome. Thanks, Danny. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you guys do over there at DWB. So Dogs Without Borders is a Los Angeles-based rescue group, and we focus primarily on smaller breed dogs. We pull from high-kill shelters, dogs that are highly adoptable and simply don't get enough time in the shelter because they're so overcrowded. And we put them in loving foster homes and seek to get them adopted. Last year, we placed around 550 dogs into loving forever homes, and just in the last two months, we've done over 100. So we're growing. Dogs, Dogs Without Borders is the gold standard by which rescues should be uh, should model themselves after. Galit Rubin, the founder, uh, you'll never find drama on that rescue. They take their dogs back if it doesn't work out. They do home checks. They are they're the leading edge, and they're foster-based. They can take multiple dogs because each one of their dogs goes into a foster home, which allows that rescue to grow. I'm home based, so I'm limited. Yeah. But I also take on aggression. So Galit saves more dogs than than 10, 15 rescues combined. Yeah, I mean, we uh, when we first started, our show got started trying to get this uh, movie that we were um, trying to develop off the ground, and um, it helped us get in, integrated and involved with some of the, the issues. Developing. Yeah, we're some of the developing. issues and uh, and um, meeting some of the rescue groups, and they were one of the first rescue groups that, that we had a chance to visit with and get to see. We went to uh, one of your guys' adoption events that you guys do out in Hollywood, Nick. Yep. And it was just it was just really cool to see that the not only the the sophistication and the care like the follow up was really what impressed me about how okay well once you get these whether you're fostering or adopting it's a living it's a it's a living breed it's not a piece of furniture yeah. so so Gali does the follow up if the dog needs training she'll contact someone like myself or another person it's a lifetime maintenance ritual to own a dog and um, um we also got to meet some uh, uh some trainers that probably deal more with the behavioral stuff that you deal with with the power breeds and whatnot and now uh i think they were power dogs training that's and, that's mm -hmm. melanie sanders and and they were power just dogs. they were just wonderful but, mm -hmm. but learning some of the things that people need to know about these larger uh um, power breeds like the the type of care and the type of you know interaction that you have to have with them it's not like you can just go and pick them off the shelf and and deal with them even if they are behaviorally like uh, up up to standards and whatnot it's like they're still require a certain type of uh care right hey, the tenacity yeah. is ingrained in their dna well hey and they can pop off at any moment so you just got to be super vigil hey i wanted to do something you know i wanted to make today um sort of like um multi co-host day so i want you guys to chime in at any point okay so we're not gonna until i get all of this stuff off of my plate with uh fred and richard and paula and uh cindy uh, i want you guys to just chime in and feel free because this is all our house okay thank you so i think richard is richard is out there right all right, before we go to Fred, we're going to shake it up today. I want right. to get Richard in here and talk about what he's doing, man, because he is so cool, you know. And and prior to doing that, I wanted to throw a shout-out to uh, the One Pet for One Vet. Oh, oh yeah. Those oh, guys, man, Joe. Joe. And those guys down there, man, and they're going to be regulars on the show, okay? We had so, some guys on last week. They're, uh, he's a he's a special forces guy, from, you know, came back from Afghanistan and stuff. They have an organization called... Uh, one, one pet, pet for, for one, one vet, vet, and they the they pair up uh, dogs like pit bulls and stuff with veterans who <gasps> who have. Uh, I donate you know, once a year. Stuff. I pick one of my most stable, um, bulletproof dogs, 
and no pun intended, and yeah. I and I give it to an organization called Pets for Vets, and I yeah. just paired wow. up a dog with a with a quadriplegic. Well, um, that oh, I took in, and really? th that's how I give back. One of the ways I give back to the community. Well, see, we're gonna, we're gonna do plug something. them up. Oh no, we're gonna. I'm telling, you, we making the world smaller. We, yeah. This show, we making the world smaller. We hooking everybody up. This is gonna be the glue. As a matter of fact, with on uh, Breeder X for me, it, Greenpeace has got back to me, and we may just. I'm telling you, that I'm trying to make the world not only a better place, but a smaller place. Yeah. And and Fred Cray is a big part of that. But that's another story. All right, <laughs> let's get to Richard. Richard, you out there? And yes, I sir, I am. Richard. What's up, Richard? How you doing? Doing fine, gentlemen. How are you today? Oh, man, we're wonderful. Tell us a little bit about your organization and what it is that you do. Well, we are a people rescue here in Western Kentucky. We just opened our doors a little over a year ago. I've worked with several other rescues through the years. But um, when I decided that I didn't want to drive to Louisville all the time, which is about a three-hour drive for me, I got with a local rescue group that uh, didn't really like pit bulls. So I thought, you know, the heck with this. I'm going to start my own rescue. And about a year and a half ago, we started it, putting it in the works. We got started with Unchained Love Incorporated. And we've been growing ever since. I mean, we're doing adoption events, pack walks. We've got a lot of neat programs that will be starting this summer and the fall. It's it's amazing what we're doing in Western Kentucky. We're fighting BSL. Uh, Fred has worked with a couple of our friends uh, with uh, Fight for a Dog's Right in Livingston County. He's helping them fight the uh, BSL over there and get that overturned. So he's doing a great job helping us out with that. So, we so really you just get, that. Are, were you flying kind of blind when you got started, or did you just get up off the couch one day and say, hey, I got to make a difference? Or were you, uh, were you in the dog uh, community first? How did you get started? Well, I had worked with several different rescue groups. One of the rescue groups I worked with was out of Louisville, Kentucky, called Saving Sunny. And they were a pit bull rescue and really liked it and enjoyed doing it. But it was just such a long drive for me, three hours every weekend. Um, I couldn't spend all the time doing the things I needed to do. So I decided to get in a local rescue group down by where I live at, Paducah, Kentucky. And like I said, they didn't like pit bulls. So I chose to leave there and start my own rescue. I, I didn't know how much work was going to be involved. I had no clue. I, don't, but I finally I, just jumped in there. Can I chime in? I don't think they don't like pit bulls. I, think, I don't think they like the name. They don't know what pit bulls are. So we need people like you to educate. They're just, it's another breed. The, the, right, the I name, agree. The, the rescue, it's. The, the, the word the pit bull is synonymous with dislike. Right. The rescue group itself, they were just. They, uh, they, all they knew was media hype about the breed, so they chose not to, you know, have them in their group. Which, when I went in the group, I told them I was a pit bull person. I love pit bulls. That's the only kind of breed I really wanted to help. I do others, but my pit bulls mean the world to me. So that's where I jumped in there and started my own rescue. You're out in Kentucky. What's the dichotomy out there? How what? Uh, we have difficulty placing pit bulls in LA. I'm wondering what the demographic is out there and what your placement rate is being that it's the country we do we do really good we do really good um the people in western kentucky seem to be a little more acceptable they're uh they use pit bulls more as a working dog we do some have some dog fighting going on but pit bulls here are not as hard to place especially if they're under two years of age anything over about three years of age becomes harder for us to place because everybody knows that pit bulls lifespan is 10 to 12 years and they're afraid they'll get attached and the dog will die on before you know they're ready for them to. What's the I know I know Foster's gonna gonna chime in on this because he's big on this on educating the, the African American and Latino community. What's the demographic over there on people that are adopting the dogs? Um, we have, you know, we have black people. We also have we don't have as many Mexicans in our, our neck of the world as other people. We could send do, you some we have a few. <laughs> <laughs> Foster said he could send you some. Okay, no, I just got a couple of now, friends. That's, know, all. that's another we need a few story. More people that, Don't mind me. Maybe open up some more eyes, you know? Yeah, no, big time. <laughs> no, you know what? But, I mean, the thing for me is that, you know, um, when, when it seems like the Midwest, man, when I talk to a lot of people in the Midwest, the dog fighting thing ain't going away. Mm -mm. It's, it's huge. It's huge. I mean, and it's economics. They, everybody tells me to an extent, but I don't buy that economic thing. You know, that's like when they, you know, the excuse with, okay, you know, we are, okay, Michael Vick. We're not going Vick bash today. I'm not going there. You know, yeah, he <laughs> fucked up bad and 
And but you can't tell me about economics. You can't tell me somebody was raised. It's like this. It's not so much because economics. It's cultural because some of the pit fighters they got fifty hundred grand down on these fights. So right. it's not economic. It's socioeconomic. Absolutely, and but, education. but and 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 it's and it's just plain evil too, though, because. You know, people say, oh, well, Michael Vick, you know, and I mean, in originally I tried to say, well, it was his family was messed up and fucked up. Basically, I'm on cable, right? I don't have to say, you know, it's an adult show. Uh, <laughs> his family was fucked up because they didn't teach him better. And he grew up in that culture. Yeah, yeah. But this is where I draw the line. He is a educated, college educated man. He's making millions of dollars. And you can't tell me you can get down the field in the last two minutes and win. Well, What's the difference between shit. going to college and being college educated? I mean, you know, <laughs> you give me a D1 scholarship or whatever. I don't know how many classes <laughs> I'm going. Right, right, you know right. Saying? But you do know right from wrong. Well, I See, mean, that's the should. bottom line. You know, you do know when you hold electrodes to Foster, a dog's collar, Foster, he's you know right die. from wrong. Yeah, when, when you, you drown a dog in a barrel of water Foster, holding his legs, you know that's wrong. Here, so no. anyway, let's not go there. He doesn't deserve this time. Forget him, but you know right from wrong when you stop on your own and you look to God or whatever your 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 passion that's is. That's right. And you realize what you're doing is wrong and you have an epiphany and you make it not when you get caught and then you find God and all that stuff in prison. So I'm, I don't want to give him that That's credit. right, exactly. So what I'm going to do, so I'll go back to what Richard was saying. I was just saying that the, the, the credit goes to people like Richard that, like, for whatever, something got inside of you and said, hey, I can do something. And right. to do it on that level, like, how many how many dogs are you guys rescuing these days, uh, Richard? Like, what's your, uh, can, we, can we hear him or? Rich? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was just letting you finish. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just um, asking you how your rescue's going. We have about 22 dogs in our, in our foster system right now. Um, last year, in our first year, we adopted over 107 dogs hey. out, rescued and saved. <laughs> so that was our first year. And we're hoping this year we'll hit close to 200. And then, you know, we want to just keep going up and up and up. But one of the things we do with our rescue, our dogs are not just saved. We take them through training programs and we deal with what we have to deal with. They have issues, you know, socialization problems. That's where our pack walks come into play. Um, we invite everybody, chihuahuas, you know, it doesn't matter what you've got. Please come out and bring your dogs with you. And we walk together as a big pack. It teaches socialization and it helps the dogs to get along with other dogs because pit bulls have a bad rap of not getting along with other dogs. And I never found it an issue. I mean, usually within a month, we can train a dog that has some dog regression issues and get rid of it within the first month. It's never been an issue for us. So we are, you know, we do the training, we do the fostering, we keep our dogs inside of homes so that it, they learn their social skills. Um, we constantly take them to adoption events, even if they're not ready. We take them to pack walks, even if they're not ready. We go to PetSmart, Petco, whatever, you know, maybe in the area take our dogs so they're being socialized and they're being seen and they're you know people can see them as what they are a good family breed of dogs yeah that's, i mean that's that's wonderful when i uh it, when i when i go to some of these adoption events like i'll go to mm -hmm. dog without borders uh events a few times and you just see there's a whole different level when people get to interact with the dog you know like regardless of what breed it is like they just there's, dogs just have a tremendous capacity to me to reach humans one, in a way that right. the humans sometimes One of don't. my <laughs> favorite things, and I know everybody here has experienced it, I mm -hmm. love it because I'm always out doing something sure. somewhere. My favorite thing is people walking up to me at a cafe, getting down, kissing, loving on my dog. Right. <laughs> Ten minutes later, asking me what it is, me saying it's a pit bull, and them jumping back. <laughs> right. Well, you know. Well, After my, the fact. Exactly. And, and my favorite is when people will see me with my dog, right, and they would be like, well, that's a pit bull, and they say like, but, but he's cool, and they say how come? <laughs> but he's yeah, cool. but he's cool, and they say, well, how come he's so cool? I said, hey, you know, it ain't the dog. That's it's prejudice. The, it's that's the prejudice. Owner. That's like saying, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, my so, friend's black, but he's cool. That's my right, friend, exactly. But he's cool. Hey, speaking of that, coming back, we're gonna have uh, we Donald Sterling or uh, is coming in. Oh and, no. Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh, no. So, what a beat down? No, no. Yeah. Oh, no. So so <laughs> we'll be right back after this commercial.
All right, we are back, and yeah. I just found out that, um, you know, I, I mean, it took me a, uh, almost a week, you know, of sitting outside, you know, Mr. Sterling's, and I use that term lightly, uh, <laughs> house with two pit bulls, that he had agreed to come in here. And damn it, he didn't show. We were, trying to, we were trying to find somebody with a worse reputation than the pit bulls are getting in. That's uh, he right, was exactly. The, he was the closest to the... There's a new, there's the a new whole, term for BS. It's called bigot sterling. Right. You know, I mean, it, you know, the whole thing was, it was like, he was coming. And then, last minute, I get this text. Are there going to be black people? Shut up. Are you going to bring uh, black people to my show? I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Well, Did you, you guys, see my picture? You guys were wa you guys are watching conversation with a pit bull uh, live. We're uh, we're streaming live all over the world. So if you're out there in any uh, country and you're getting the signal or whatever, feel free to hit us up. Hey, don't you know? bring Fred on, okay? Oh, he's. he's don't he bring, did. Yeah. He did something wrong. What no, I wanted no, to do. Oh, he's I, online. Oh, I wanted to. I wanted oh, to ask. Uh, I'm sorry. I wanted to ask Nicole really quickly about her event that you guys are doing this weekend. Nicole, what, what's a uh, what's the big event you guys are participating in? Yeah. So anyone who's in the Los Angeles area and has been thinking at all about adopting or fostering an animal, this weekend is the adoption event to attend. It's at the La Brea Tar Pits, both Saturday and Sunday, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the grand host is actually Best Friends Animal Society, who has started a No Kill LA initiative. There'll be dozens of rescue groups represented, city and county shelters, as well as um, different animal-related vendors. And uh, over a thousand animals um, will be there available for adoption for you to meet and greet, walk around, and hopefully take home. The last event, we had several hundred that got adopted just yeah. within a two-day period. And then the remaining animals that were in the city and county shelters, rescue groups like Dogs Without Borders, stepped up mm -hmm. and pulled those remaining dogs. So every shelter left empty. Well, so one of, one of the things I wanted to ask you, Nick, was, and this is this is one of the things, one of the reasons why we we do this show because we feel like there's a lot of fragmentation and um, between the people that are all seem like a lot of them are trying to do the good work but there seems to be a lot of uh division within the ranks and one of the topics that comes up is these larger organizations like um it seems like they're the ones that are able to put on these larger events and thankfully they they're able to include some of the the smaller um organizations which are really really on the front lines like um do you see any issues between the larger organizations with uh, dealing with the smaller organizations, kind of like, you know how like sometimes larger organizations, they get a lot of the, the respect or the advertising or the money that, and it, sometimes it's misappropriated, but sometimes they kind of marginalize the work that the, the smaller organizations are doing. Well, I think from an NKLA perspective, Best Friends has been amazing. And I think that they pull together sort of a broader infrastructure for events like this adoption event this weekend and also a fundraising event that we do more in the fall called Strut Your Mutt, where a small organization like Dogs Without Borders would never be able to have enough volunteers and funding to pull together such a grand scale event. And we're able to place hundreds of dogs and raise tens of thousands of dollars through NKLA and Best Friends providing the foundation for us to be able to hold those kinds of events and that's what I that's what I think too because I think it's like a lot of times people are so quick to they're quick to bash like organizations whether they're large or whatever just because they're large well, but I'll sometimes bash them they because have, I don't know any better well sometimes they 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 do provide some of that key uh, infrastructure that allows some of the people that are already ready to go you know how like it's kind of like just open the gate a little bit so I can come through with this tidal wave of of my supporters and yeah. my the, the little guys, like they'll come running over the hill and, and really put in work. So well, we, we went to that Strut Your Mutt event, the last one they had, yeah. and that was really fun. I mean, it was well, it was about it was about 10 degrees hotter than it is right now. But. Right. Well, I want I want Nicole to see if the, you know, uh, best friends people will, will get behind Breeder X and see if they can throw some weight, you know. Uh, but we'll talk about that because it's not just the big organizations that throw their weight around, you know, and the little guys. It's it's the people too. It's like the yeah. Fred craze of the world. Yeah. He throws his weight around, yeah. and I get nothing, you know. And if, and if it wasn't for the fact that he was such a biggie in the world of bigness, we wouldn't even bring him on right now. It's he's on there, right? Bring Fred on before I get excommunicated. <laughs> What's up, Fred? Hey man, what's up? Oh man, uh, introduce you to Kyle and Nicole. These are our I friends out here. Throw their weight around on the show. It's you, Danny. Hey, well, you, you see, every time I I go to my rescue friends and they say, "Hey man, I'm gonna get you a T-shirt," 
All you rescue groups that are out there printing up these lovely T-shirts, like invest in some three X, bro, because you you got your boy out here looking like he got uh, the tight one, yeah. like like Bound I'm on a Angels. tour de France or something. But I still rock it. That's how much I love you. Shout out to Bound Angels. They're a group out here doing some wonderful work. So oh, that's Robert Cabral. Yeah, hey, if, if, right. if you guys if you guys if you guys got any gear. We love to represent it. I'm just saying, throw a little 3X at your boy so I can really represent it correctly. That's right. And it's easy to remember. You send stuff to Conversations with a Pitbull. Send the smallest one in the medium you got. Yeah. Send the biggest one that you got in the biggest that you got. But you yeah, see but Danny's every- wife told me he likes him in the double X instead of the triple X. Hey, man, you know, that's just give me some more. Uh, I got I to gotta get my, my shape down for the summertime. But uh, tell us what's no, going no, no, on no, in the just, world of uh, legal news, Fred. I wish you could see more, see you more accurately. Exactly. We get the wide angle uh, webcams going on. We'll be all right. Tell us what's going on in the world of legal news, bro. Well, there's a lot of news going on. First of all, as you all know, and Foster knows, tomorrow is the Million Pibble March on Washington D.C. So My God, that's see- what I've been I've been posting about that and. I totally forgot. So thank you, Fred, for. Uh, but you a sponsor of that event anyway. We a lover uh, we, of the we, event. You know, we had Rebecca we in here and we threw down and we, we took some, you know, kicked some buttons and, and some names yes, for the uh, organization is going to be going to it tomorrow. Yeah. Well, go Rebecca Corey. Yeah, go ahead, Rebecca. Do your thing. Did they and ever resolve that issue? I know There's Fred. There's also a march going on in Toronto, Canada. And uh, Yvette Van Veen, who is on our show as a sort of a trainer, is going to be giving a talk about breed discriminatory legislation there. Uh, so that's another march that's going on. Portland. Um, there's some lawsuits going on. Uh, I got admitted pro hack Vici in Louisiana this week. So I'm ready to fight the uh, Nulano Pitbull band. Uh, my friend Adam Karp, in, uh, who's out in Washington State, is going to be filing suit against the Yakima or Yakima uh, yeah, service dog um, pit bull situation where the, if you have a pit bull that's a service dog, if, they won't let you have it. If there's so gonna he's be- going to be suing Yakima about that. Uh, there's also another service dog uh, case going on in Miami, Condi versus Miami-Dade County, where they're suing uh, the county of my the county of Dade County. Uh, for not having a pit bull exemption in their uh, service dog exemption in their law. Uh, The interesting thing about Miami is that they filed an answer saying that they, although their statute doesn't include that exemption, they have a policy of exempting dogs. So uh, I never heard of policy. I've been following the Miami pit bull ban forever. And I guess one of the questions in that case is, does a policy make an unconstitutional law constitutional? I, you know, it's, uh, Fred, it's very strange. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Fred, Fred let yeah. me ask you a question as an attorney, uh, just a, a different angle. Uh, if they're going to put BSL legislation on a pit bull, I think we should put uh, a uh, we should put a ban on them that they have to uh, they have to pay for a DNA test on the dog to show that it's a certain percentage of pit, pit bulls, not one particular breed. Pitbull is a slang terminology right. for a conglomerate of tenacious bully breeds. So they could be putting yes. down innocent. This right here, this is an American Staffordshire Terrier. To the average person right. with the cropped ear, it's going to look like a pit. You, you'd have to, you'd right. have to kill me to put this dog down to, bear, to break it from my hand. So they need to be held accountable too, because who's to say? It's like innocent people that go to jail and are sit on death row, and DNA uh, uh, absolves them of their crime. 30 years later, they've wasted their well, life. What about what about an innocent dog? To have, my case in Nulano happens to involve uh, a situation where they do a visual ID and then they give a dog the DNA test. Right. Uh, the problem that we found is, first of all, there's a case out of, of uh, Miami that says visual identification by animal control officers is inadmissible Good. because there's no science behind it and it's essentially junk science yeah that's it uh all right so secondly the dna test uh there's no due process in the new lano law but they throw it to the dna test and what we found out about the dna test in the litigation are three major things one the mars dna test uh does not include the american pit bull terrier so it's a violation of equal protection because it does include the other two breeds that are defined, but does not include that 
My geneticist says if you have an American pit bull terrier and you submit it to the Mars DNA test, it comes back as some other dog because right. they don't have that in their in their the, the, in their database. The, 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 the second thing, wait a minute. Second thing is, is it by its own terms of use? When you agree to use the Mars DNA test, it actually says in its terms of use, this test will not be used to to use uh, for banning a dog under. Uh, breed discriminatory legislation, and in the last month, they've changed it again and added another sentence that says, this this DNA test will never be, should not be used in any court proceedings. Hmm. So, and the third thing is, my geneticist expert says, nobody knows how the Mars DNA test is done. Can you imagine O.J. Simpson on the stand or being, uh, you know, being uh, uh, tried and the DNA guy coming up on the stand and saying, yep, I tested his DNA. It's his DNA, but I'm not telling you how I did it. Hmm. That would but, never work. But right. then he could so say, if the slob don't now, spit, it, it must your have quit. Is, and, that in the legal system, but, um, I don't see how you identify pit bulls you know, in any way. You can't. The gene pools are completely muddy with backyard breeders yes. mixing in all the different things. The word pit bull is a ghetto term. It was, it was created, the two words, pit, meaning the pit that they fight them in. And a bull, meaning the tenacity to grab on and to, to hold and shake. That, that, there's no such breed. I've been 26 years a as a pit bull. It's not a I, breed. And, and, and you, the, the, basically the way that they do it is they name the three breeds in the, in the ordinance. Right. The problem is uh, visual identification in Miami, where this case came out of, is, is vi- they actually have a checklist there for each different breed. And your dog has to meet 70% of the standards 70%. of that breed. Right. To be clear, declared a pit bull. Now that is the most sophisticated testing I've seen across the United States. Most people have, like in Moses Lake, there's a guy driving around with a book in his car of dog breeds. He looks at the picture of you know one of the breeds and says that looks like it. Hey, um, Fred. So you have a very, it, it's a very unscientific thing. Uh, I don't think if you had to go to trial that you could get the dog, the animal control's opinion into evidence. Because it's junk science. Hey, Fred, listen, uh, uh, Chris is over there waving at me and sending me notes and stuff about I haven't done but one commercial to pay. And he said if I don't want the lights to go out, then I should be able to Stay on the line. We're going to go pay some bills real quick, Fred, and then we want to come back to you and uh, talk about some of these issues because this this stuff is great. We'll be right back. Are you a diabetic? Need some energy? Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink is the healthiest, best-tasting energy drink around. For more information and online ordering with free shipping, please visit hiphopbev.com. Remember, Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, suitable for diabetics, great for everyone. And shepherds like me. All right, we're back. Hello. Conversation with a pit bull. Oh, you finally got Oprah hello, in the studio. Hello. hello, my name is Oprah, and I'm on Conversations with a Pit Bull. And <laughs> I know you're saying what's wrong with me, but it's because I'm playing with all the dogs that I own, and I'm not. I'm trying to get on Conversations with a Pit Bull, but they won't have me on. Oh, she's fool. busy trying to get the Clippers, uh, Clippers bought out. But Fred, check this out, man, because we're these are. First of all, I'm glad that, that that you're gonna go out there and put the smash down on these fools in court. But as we all know, like going to some of these town hall meetings and some of these, uh, you know, these official, uh, you know, meetings that they have, you can you can hit them with the all the rational like thought and and research and what. Yeah, but we're going still... before a federal judge. Yeah, but sometimes you know how it is. We you can... go there with all the rational yes. thought process well, and everything, tell, and they're I'll like, oh, well, that doesn't matter. Like, here's how bad the visual ID is in Nulano. They actually had a dog that was a bull terrier, which is the Spud McKenzie patent kind of dog. Looks nothing like a pit bull. They seized that dog or they identified that dog as a pit bull, I guess, because 
it, it, the name sounds like a pit bull terrier. So they gave the person a ticket and guess who they go in front of for the ticket? The mayor. So that's what you're talking about, Danny. How are you going to admit, how are you going to win a case when the mayor who passed the law is the one who's here in your case? This is why we decided to file in federal court. One of the things I wanted to ask you, you Fred, about, that. you know, you heard about this, uh, this case down in, um, in Arizona, I'm sure with Mickey, the pit bull. Uh, yes, I'd have heard about it. I, know. I know the guy who, who was involved in that was Richard Rosenthal from the Lexus, Lexus project. One of the things I wanted to ask you about, um, I know there's a lot that's going along with the, with that case or whatever, but they finally, like, I think brought it to some type of resolution. But one of the things that they were going to yes. do as part of the resolution was defang the dog, like, as like, yes. a pull out his fangs and and something and I I'd never well, I never even thought about that or even heard about that but that seems or, like kind of like a crazy a crazy it's gonna uh, make the, gonna make the bite concept worse. like like ha, ha, can you talk to us a little bit about like defanging or or you know it seems well, all I can tell you is I've never heard I've never heard it done I've never heard that judicial order be given before and I've I've looked at every dangerous dog case that's ever been decided in the United States at the appellate level. Uh, generally, banishment, microchipping, tattooing, uh, those are the, 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 the general uh, things that they do. You usually have to have a fence. You have to have an enclosure. I've never heard of defanging a dog. I, you know, I think the question is, is the dog better alive with having, having either his teeth filed down or pulled out or dead? And I think, you know, I guess the answer is he's better off to be alive. Um, the, the terrible thing about that case, you know, is that all of the rancor that it, it created because people were saying, well, you like dogs more than you like kids. Uh, and it's it was a strange case because really, my in my opinion, it was more of the babysitter's fault and more the dog owner's fault. And what happened was the, the kid left his yard and walked over to the adjoining yard where there was a pit bull that was chained and took the dog's bone and the dog then attacked the kid See, uh, what happened to the parents what happened to the owner who has him chained out there i mean i thought the, and so anybody who defended the dog was criticized as liking dogs better than the no, no. kids that's right but Fred, anybody let me let me let me was criticized for not but, taking into account the fact that it was the dogs, you know, it, the kid went into the dog's yard and into the area where it was chained. That's right. Fred, so, listen, let me let me stop you just for one second, because the bottom line with that is, you know, if you don't take care of your kids, you know, she could the kid could have walked out in, into traffic. You know, the dog's just taking the heat. Well, but here's but I gotta, here, here there's an interesting there's an interesting twist. And that is the person who filed the dangerous dog complaint was not the victim or the victim's family. It was a friend of the babysitter. Oh, and the I, babysitter had alleged that previous to this, she'd had trouble with this dog. Yeah, so that's when you get actually, Fred, all, yeah, I think when you get underneath of it all, what you see is the dog is a pawn in, in some neighborhood disputes. Right, it was the, the, the friend, I'm sorry, Fred. 75% of the time. The, yeah, the friend of the babysitter is who were is the person that was distracting her from paying attention to the baby? So they try to make her feel better. But listen, I gotta leave that because I got stuff on the plate that we gotta take care of. But the main thing that I almost slept on and I forgot, Richard, you still there? Richard, I lose you. God, I think man, he's, I'm, he's I'm on so hold. Bad. I can't do nothing. Right. Fred, I, 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 I want to get back no, up no, with no, you and talk about this defanging no, thing later. That's right, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because. It's Let me say birthday. one thing. And, Foster is going to be a totally guest on my show that, this you know? coming Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. Fred, Fred, talk about Fred, Fred, wait a minute, Fred, <laughs> can you hear me? Fred, can you hear me? I think my connection is hear. bad. I need another microphone, though. Fred. He can hear oh, yeah. oh, okay. He can hear? You okay. Can hear. And I don't have headsets. Yeah. Duh, that might be part of it, too. This is what I want to say. To mic, bro. Okay, for, forget about... Forget about that dog, because I hate those people, man. I really do. They they make me so mad because, you know, um, it's just wrong. Richard's birthday, that's a big deal. Because this, did you hear this cat say he did? They rescued almost 200 dogs, man. 
Do you know how many dogs that is? Wait, wait, that's I mean, all pits. Yeah. That's, that makes it I mean, even... that's like, yeah, exactly. On the, on the rescue scale of, I mean, rescue and German Shepherd or, or Chihuahua, Poodle, anything is a job. That's why I'm, we're the rescue for the rescues. We just want to bow down to everybody that's doing the real groundwork. To, yeah, to and put if you want to see a bunch of them, make sure you guys go out to La Brea Tar Pits this weekend. That's right. right. Exactly. That's right. right. That's hey, going to be the place. Not, yeah. not to go back to the case mm -hmm. with, with the dog being defanged, but it just brings up a subject. The oh, dog right. is only as dangerous as, as the hands of the owner that... That, that's right. That, that has its thing. If, if your kid got hurt, you're not that's on right. top of your that's dog, right. and you're not on top of your game. Because, like you said, it could have been the street, it or it could it could have been a kidnapper. That's right. That's right. The kid could have went under the bed and got the gun. But, hey, Richard, Richard, you there? Yes, sir. Hey, man. Yes, I sir. Wanted to, I wanted to raise my pit bull can oh to God. you, and yes, say happy birthday, brother. Happy birthday. You know, you made another one. <laughs> that's the name of the game that keeps stacking them up. You know, and I'm not going to ask you how old 62, 5, 7, uh, 39 you are. We wouldn't put that out there, you know. Uh, <laughs> but we just want to say from the conversations with the Pitbull family and all the people who are out here doing the, the hard work in the animal world, not just dogs, but everybody snood and everybody the else around the world and, and Japan and every place that they get us. We're saying happy birthday, brother, and, you know, we hey, bow down for the work you've been doing. Richard, also tell them where where can people get in contact with you because I, I know that you could use some support uh, just like everybody that's on the front line. Where, where, where can they find you on Facebook or the web so they can uh, send some uh, support your way? We have a Facebook page. Of, it's Unchained Love, Inc. And then we have a uh, worldwide web page. It's www.unchainedloveinc.org. Um, you can also contact us, you know, by if you want to send a mail or something like that, the snail mail way, you can do it post office box 336, Eddieville, Kentucky, 42038. You can reach us by phone at 812-463-2331. You know, we, we're always willing to help with any people that event or problem that you may have. You know, we even have trainers on board that will help with that. We will do whatever we can to keep your dog in your home for you. Um, we have a feeding program that we do right now, so people are running low on cash, and they can't afford to, you know, to feed their dog by themselves. We take them dog food until they get back on their feet. We have a, a reading with pit bulls program getting ready to start up this summer, where um, kids that have disabilities or have problems reading aloud to people will be having a pit bull sit with them. The dog doesn't care if you miss pronounce the word. They don't care what you do or what you look like. They just want to lay there and get petted and loved by you and give you kisses. So if you read bad or good or indifferent, it doesn't matter then they're going to be happy to do that. But one of the, the big things that we're really excited about is the new program we're going to start this fall in some of our local schools. Because like you guys said earlier, in the South and everything else, pit bull fighting and dog fighting, cock fighting and all that stuff is predominant in our area. So we're going to start by training younger kids how to respect animals and show them love and to, you know, to, to stay away from that kind of lifestyle right. and train them that that's not the way animals need to be treated. Plus, we're also going to teach them, you know, how to not get bit by a dog because, you know, the signs to look for when a dog stands a certain way or does a certain thing. That's right. So that they'll learn to get away from the animal before they get bit because we feel like a lot of these things like the little kid you were talking about a while ago that walked from one yard and the other didn't know how to, to act properly. And by us starting in younger grades in school, second, third, and fourth grade, we're going to teach kids how to respect the animal and not get up in their face. So the likelihood of getting bit is you know reduced greatly. Right. Well, Richard, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to, we want to have you back again because we want to see more about, you know, some video of, of you doing your thing and your, your facilities and where you, you know, because 200 dogs, that's mind boggling for me, man. But I, I got to let you go because I really want to get um, Cindy. Cindy Marn. Let me, I had some notes, but I can't even read my own writing. See that? But hey, Richard, that, that reading program, Pitbulls reading, kids reading, that's a wonderful thing because maybe if I can get down your way, you guys could get me in on that kind of program a little bit because Danny been trying to get teach me how to read, man. 
and I'm I'm past the seas now, so I'm I'm moving forward. But I never thought about reading with a pit bull. That hey, definitely man, like beats we always me up. say, man. Every little bit helps. You can you can adopt, you can transport, you can volunteer, you can do so many different things. So when you see people doing stuff, even if they're just trying something. I think they deserve some support, and if, if you can help them do it better or do it without the um, you know some of the negativity and stuff that, that right. comes into play, I think that's just a wonderful thing. That's you know? right. So we're going to a commercial because I'm going to go out back and see if Oprah's limo has pulled up yet. Uh, you heard the and, jazz playing. That must be her. Well, that might be, you know. So so when we come back, we'll either have Oprah or she stood us up again. We're going to pay some bills real right. quick, and we're going to find out a little bit more about this adoption event that's going on this weekend. We're going to find out a little bit more about Kyle's training methods and stuff like that. Happy the, birthday, the Richard. The rehabilitation that he's doing. Thank you, guys. Hey, are you tired of those same old energy drinks with bad taste? Make a switch to Pitbull Energy Drink with a guaranteed no aftertaste. Pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins B6 and B12. With a ginger ale, lemon lime flavor, Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products with a guaranteed no aftertaste. Make a switch to Pitbull Energy Drink. Pitbull offers more energy with ginseng and vitamins B6 and B12. With a ginger ale, lemon lime flavor, Pitbull meets the consumer's demand for better tasting and healthier energy products. For more information on Pitbull energy drinks, bars, and mixes, visit their website at hiphopbev.com. That's hiphopbev.com. Online orders available at hiphopbev.com. Hello, Cindy. How are you, dear? Can you hear me? Hey, listen. Uh, I We ran over, not we, I, because Danny is always on time, and he's got, he goes by the book, and you know I don't even know how to write, okay? So I wanted to give you five minutes because, you know, you get on with us all the time because I got to get to Paula, the pit archer, because we have to save some dogs. So hi, baby. Hey, can you see me? I see you. Uh, we're looking up your nose, but I see you. <laughs> but that's all right. You know, it's like I've had people looking down on me most of my life, so it don't bother me, dear. How you doing? Tell us what's going on. Hey, can you hear me? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, there I am. Yeah, look down at me. Here I am. There you go. Okay. Can you see me now? I see you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. If you hear, do you see my mouth moving? Don't worry about me. You just talk. Okay. Well, what I'm doing is uh, <laughs> a place called Doglandia. Go ahead. I'm not going to talk back to you. Yeah, just go ahead. Tell us what's going on. Okay. I'm uh, building Doglandia. That's what I'm here to talk about today. Oh. So go ahead and go. tell us about it. Like, go ahead. Speak. Okay. Doglandia is going to be the, we, we currently operate the world's only holistic, raw feeding, no kill pit bull refuge. Wow. What we want to do is grow it. We want to build a world class holistic dog center, like a shopping center, seven day a week training where people can come from all over the world and certify and take Doglandia back to their communities. And we're gonna build it out of shipping containers. Wow. Whoa. Where did this idea come from? Where'd you get yeah. the idea from? Well, I started just doing it out of my house and I thought, you know what? Let's make it big. Let's make it splashy. Let's make it ostentatious. Let's build it on the beach. Wow. That's what and I'm talking about. You, stay, you stayed up all night one night, huh? <laughs> yeah, a couple of 
Illuminati. <laughs> That's right. So where are you getting these shipping containers from, though? In the though? middle of the Time. Yeah, I mean that's so, not just something you have hanging around like shipping containers. Like, are you getting these donated, or how how are you guys going about doing it? Well, I'm actually started kind of an Indiegogo, you know, crowdfunding uh, situation, and we have a fundraiser uh, going on right now. We actually uh, it's it's for two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. Well, but, um, Cindy. I got a yeah. friend. I got a friend. You should just get in touch with, and they could probably help us out big time. Is her name is Oprah? Okay, <laughs> and uh, yeah. you you can Google her. You can find her on the net, right? She's all over the place. Uh, Oprah Winfrey. All right, and you tell her Foster from Conversations with a Pitbull. We go way black. I'm from Chicago. She's from Chicago. She got big in Chicago. I left Chicago. They ran me out of town. So we got that much in common. So let's, you know, reach out to her and, you know, because that sounds like a great thing for her to get behind. What are, what are going to be some of the, 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 the top features of Doglandia? Okay. It's going to be like a shopping center, a one-stop for dogs. We'll have a DIY dog wash so you can go to the beach, get your dog dirty, go to dog training, uh, wash your dog. You can stop there and get your raw food for the week. We're going to have the herbal animal where I'll be in charge of selling herbal, uh, flower essences, um, homeopathy to cure everything from heartworm to kennel cough to cancer. We're going to have a water purification store where we're going to sell water purification systems. Um, we're going to sell um, air purification systems, which we've already launched, but it's it's pretty quiet. For instance, uh, shelter like Merino Valley, where um, you know what they call the Valley Fever is rampant. Right. We're going to take up collections and install an air purification system there, so we can wipe out all of this distemper, right. carbo, Valley Fever that is just killing all the dogs and stopping rescues like me from going in and saving more than one or two dogs at a time exactly well you hey cindy listen what this is what i want to do because we we we're gonna support doglandia you know to the max you know and then maybe when danny and i come there we'll be able to get in and get past security and stuff because we got low friends in high places like you but i i gotta let you go because Okay. If I don't get Paula the Pit Archer on, I didn't do this show a service because at the end of the day we have to save dogs. Okay? Because I tell I people, I tell people, yeah, and our show is not that important. You know, we're not curing cancer, but we are saving lives. So let's bring uh, get Paula on the Skype and. Let's get some dogs, some new homes, and so while we're trying to get Paula on, on 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 deck, Nick, again, just tell us about this event again. Where where people should go, what they can do, how they can get involved. Absolutely. So it's the uh, Best Friends No Kill LA Adoption Event. It's this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the La Brea Tar Pits in West LA, and just show up, be ready to fall in love. If you have a pet already, you can bring your pet. It's very pet friendly. There's lots of pet friendly vendors and uh, you can adopt a dog. You can also foster a dog. Um, fostering for most rescues is free to the individual. The rescue Gosh. typically provides food and medical and you're saving a life. You're basically giving the dog a place to be until they find their forever home. And a lot of rescues will be looking for fosters as well. Okay, and cool. Before we get to Paula real quick, she's gonna help us adopt some dogs. Kyle, tell us a little bit about the little the little dog that you got in your hands. I know he's got a uh, uh, he's got an amazing story. Let me let me just Oh, this is Mio. Little Mio. It's funny, the owners uh, they had the money to crop her ears, but then they allowed her to get into the condition that you guys are gonna show now. What happens with these dogs is they're confiscated by animal control. They become evidence dogs. They sit at the shelter. They're not available to the general public. They're available as RO dogs, meaning rescue only. Rescue only meaning you have to uh, be a licensed rescue like myself, carry a certain amount of insurance. Um, I carry a million dollar policy for uh, tenacious breeds, keep myself out of trouble and for injuries to myself. Um, that allows me to pull rescue only dogs. And, and within doing that, I stay transparent. I put her medical updates, uh, her billing and her receipts online. 
What uh, happened to this dog? Like the the dog. This is a, this is a blue Staffordshire Terrier. The blues are sensitive to mange, which is a mite, which left untreated will cause the dog uh, to look like we've got up on the screen there. Uh, eventually, killing the dog or becoming anemic and dying from anemia. We got to her in time. Stitched up her face. She's still currently being treated. That's why the studio smells. Um, and she's going to be a great dog, but it's something that, again, can be avoided with education. Um, it's extremely inexpensive to cheat. There's home remedies for it. You can actually make a dip out of garlic, onions, mustard powder. You don't even have to go to a vet. You, there, there's treatments for these dogs online. But, uh, you know, they bred the dog. They cropped its ears. They probably wanted to make money on it, realized it had mange, dumped it at the shelter. It's just one of hundreds of thousands of dogs that... Um, don't get a fair fair shake at life. Well, give them real quick where they can get in contact with you so that if, if they do want to get some of the training, some of the rehabilitation done with their animals or uh, uh, just my some niche, general My knowledge. training is super specific. I train aggressive dogs only. People don't come to me for obedience, sit, stay down, or any of that stuff. If your dog is human aggressive, if your dog is dog aggressive, where can they get at you? They can get at me. Smash, smash face. face rescue. And, and we're going to nice. get back to Kyle because Kyle's right here in L.A. Nice. And I told him I want him in here like every other week, exactly. every third week we're or something. Every time we got some time. That's the other thing. We got to get out. Let's but find I Paula. Need Paula. Paula. Paula, are you out there? Save Hi, guys. Paula, baby. Hey, oh, yeah. hey, there you are. There she is. How you Do doing, it. Paula? Without further ado, I'm ladies good. and gentlemen. Well, we, got, we, got a, we only got a couple minutes, so let's rip through these uh, dogs and try to get some of them saved. Oh, wow. Okay, here we go. Are you ready, Chris? First up, we have Aspen. Aspen is a young 8 to 12-month-old bully mix, and um, she has beaten the odds not once but twice. She was very ill at a high-kill shelter on the south side of Atlanta. She was rushed to the animal hospital where she was diagnosed with parvo, a deadly virus, to young dogs and also puppies. Uh, for five days, she fought for her life, and she beat the virus. She is now the hospital animal hospital favorite. She is a love, love bug who wants nothing more than to be sitting in your lap. She needs to be taught some manners and be the center of someone's world. She's a wonderful young puppy who will become a wonderful family pet. She is currently spayed vaccinated and totally up to date on all vetting. Next we have Ritz. Ritz is approximately three to five years old, neutered and fully vaccinated. He was rescued from a high kill shelter just south of Atlanta within minutes of being euthanized. He has a wonderfully laid back personality and is completely submissive with people. During his first visit at the vet's office, he was one of their favorites. He is a happy-go-lucky, wonderfully temperamented dog who seems to have a big fan base everywhere he goes. Aspen and Ritz are available through Lifesavers Animal Rescue. They are a licensed nonprofit organization. Their phone number is 412-496-1338. Next up, we have Rocky. <clears throat> Rocky uh, was found in Palatka and turned over to Putnam Animal Control. They called Barry and he went and picked him up immediately. Rocky is good with most dogs provided they are not overly dominant. He would probably do best with a, fe with a female or smaller dogs. He is neutered and fully vetted. He is very special and he has quite a history um, that Barry can tell you about. Um, he is being fostered right now, and he is available for adoption, and a home check will be done. He's in Florida. You can contact Barry Norris at 904-613-3159. The next two that we have are in Fort Worth, Texas. They are adoptable. The first one is Cecil. Cecil is a pit bull mix, approximately one year old. And he is about 40 pounds and heartworm negative. Cecil will be over at the Alliance Pet Smart location today for the adoption event. And that is a great chance for you to go meet him. The Alliance Pet Smart is 2901 Texas Sage 
Trail, Fort Worth, Texas. The hours today are 9 to 8.30. And rumor has it that there is a $10 adoption fee that might also apply at the shelter. Now that's just a rumor. Next up, we have Roscoe, and he is also at the Fort Worth, uh, Texas shelter. He should be considered urgent. Roscoe is a male pit bull mix, approximately a year old. Weight is around 50 pounds. And he and Cecil can be seen at the Fort Worth Animal Control Center. The hours for adoption at the shelter are Monday, Sunday and Monday, one to four, Tuesday through Friday, 12 to six, Saturday, 12 to five. Sorry, that's my big guy getting excited about something. Wait a minute, Paula, Next you, you mean you actually have the nerve to have dogs? What is that? What's up with that? You got dogs, man? We would have never had you on if we knew you had dogs. God. So, hey, so that's it, dear. You done? One more. No, one more. I Go. One I'm more. sorry. One more. Baby Zach. Baby Zach is a male mix. He's 10 months old. He weighs 21 pounds, and he was available to 429. He's consider considered urgent. Um, he is scheduled to be put to sleep on 525. This baby is in a kill shelter, death by heart stick. And that's Abbeville, Louisiana, which uh, by heart they do not Make allow her say public adoption. Animals must be pulled hey, Paula, by a rest. Paula, person. I'm sorry, it's yeah. Kyle. We, we got to create some drama here. You got to tell people what death by heart stick is. I don't think people realize that what a barbaric society we live in. Tell you people tell, what that is. That's Kyle, I got crazy. 45 seconds left. Go, you tell Paula. them, Kyle. You want me to tell them? You it's tell a wooden them, stake through Kyle, the heart because they don't have the money for euthanasia. It's a wooden stake through the heart. Does that hurt? Does it hurt? It could take an hour for the dog to die and bleed out if you don't hit it in the right spot. Oh, wait a minute. So you mean you ever they been have stabbed? To, if you said if they don't hit it in the right I spot. I got a shank on me. You want come so here. So you say Foster. they don't do it in the right spot. That means they like Who's if, the right spot? You a doctor? Hit, you got to do hit the MRI. right spot. They do it again. That's right. Well, that's a happy <laughs> note to end the show on. <laughs> that's what was that's no, no, no. 2014. We're no. still doing heart sticks. Oh, oh look, you guys. I have, I have a happy note on. Hey, we got to... That's gotta, animal cruelty. We're going right. to have to go, but uh, let's let's try to pep that it up a little bit. Yeah. All right. If, hey. you guys, if you guys are interested in uh, fostering uh, a dog or adopting, definitely visit our friends Dogs Without Borders. Uh, what is it? Dogswithoutborders.org, Nicole? Dogswithoutborders.org. You can go to the event this weekend to go find them. And if you want to... If you have some uh, aggressive dogs that uh, have some behavioral issues, you can definitely hit up Kyle at Smash Face on Facebook. They're doing some wonderful work. We want to thank everybody that was involved with putting the show together. Fred Cray, uh, Richard, um, uh, Cindy, and uh, as well as our good friend Paula Archer. That's right. And 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 I want to say something, right? I, I, I can't remember. Well, we want to give a shout out to everybody that joins us each week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do what you can. Get out there, attend some events, find out how you can get involved, help a dog. If you didn't get all that information that Paula just dropped on you about these dogs that need your help, there's millions of them out there. But the ones that we were mentioned on the show, if you missed the information, go to Paws Pit Parade on Facebook, yep. and Paula will hit you up and give you the information. And if, you, if you're new to the show or new to the dog community and, and are just figuring out some new things, Welcome. Visit your local rescue groups or your local animal shelters, and they'll uh, get you up to speed on what you can do to make a difference. That's right. And I'll say Breeder X and Fred Cray, you can put your clothes on now. See you later. <laughs> One Peace love, out, everybody. everybody. We love you guys. Take care. All, All right. right. I'm a pit bull, and I approve this message.